Simple brackets like this are a common shape within 3D modeling and hard surface modeling. And although they look fairly easy, there are a few things that can catch you out if you're not aware of edge flow and supporting loops. So in this simple exercise, we'll work on making this bracket together. I'll show you the shape and then you try and reproduce it. And we'll be focusing on developing your understanding of supporting loops and edge flow. The format's the same as my other Get Good at Blender videos, and you can find the series in the link in the description. By having a go yourself first, you'll understand the concepts more fully when they're taught to you. So let's start with our first shape. So here's our first shape, the start of the bracket. Pause the video and have a go at making that. Okay, so hopefully found that relatively straightforward. I'll just move this off to the side and start afresh in the middle here. Shift A to add, mesh. And then you might think you start off with something like a plane, but it's actually easier with a circle. Let's add a circle. I'll change the vertex count to 20. Default is 32. It won't make a huge amount of difference, but I just find it easier to work with slightly less topology in case I need to edit it. The reason I choose 20 is I always choose something that's divisible by four, then I can mirror it in the X and Y. So I've got my circle just here. I'll quickly go to top view, into edit mode, go to vertex mode, select the top vertices here and press delete vertices. Now we're left with half a circle, but it will make things easier if I use a mirror modifier. So I'll select half and delete those as well. Then I'll come across to my modifiers under the spanner, add modifier, start typing a mirror, and there's the mirror modifier. So I'm mirroring along the x-axis here by my object center, which is the yellow dot. Now I can extrude out. So E to extrude, tap X to constrain it to the x-axis. And we've got our basic shape there. Now I can select everything with A, E to extrude in the z-axis and bring it up to somewhere around there. Just one more thing to do, which is create the curve at the end here. So control R to do a loop cut, use the wheel of my mouse, left click to apply that and left click again to set the position. I'll select the ends here, G to grab in the X and make that a curve. And we've got the same shape as over here. That's all great. So hopefully you found that fairly straightforward. Let's look at the next one. So you've got to cut a hole in this object. Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so let's move this across to the side and duplicate the current one into edit mode. Now to make this hole, I'm going to need more topology in here. So control R to do a loop cut and I can Use the will of my mouse to create two like so. Unfortunately, they're not aligned, that's fine. I'll just double left click to set them into position and I can select a line, scale X zero and select the other line, scale X zero to make them straight. This one's a little bit wider so I can select both scale in the X and move them out slightly, somewhere around there and control R to do another loop cut down the middle, select these two and scale X. So we've got our circle shape there. It might be a little bit wide actually. It's just come to front view so I can see that more easily. Let's select them all, scale in the X, bring them in a bit. And then three to go to face mode, select these two faces and delete those faces. And we've got our hole just there. Yeah, it's a little bit wider, but it really doesn't matter. Okay, so the next stage is to add a subdivision surface modifier. So I'll go into object mode and I can go across to the modifiers and add modifier, search for the subdivision surface modifier, or I can press control two which automatically adds a subdivision surface modifier with two levels. Instantly notice it comes after my mirror. That's important. If I bring that above, you can see you get this strange split in the middle because it's subdividing at first, then adding a mirror. So if I hide the mirror, that's the shape it's actually mirroring. So make sure you have your mirror first and actually let's turn clipping on. So it sticks in the middle. Now I've got a slight problem here. There's a strange anomaly in here it's kind of squashing into this area. Have a think why that might be. Okay, so if I go into edit mode and I'll just quickly turn on the on cage option so you can see the topology. This is all to do with supporting loops. So I've got two supporting loops for this edge just here. One is this one here and the other one is this one down here. And obviously this one's distorted. So it's distorting the shape of this edge here. So how do I solve that? Have a quick think. Well, I need a different supporting loop than this one that's here. So I can select this loop, control B to bevel, and you can use the wheel of your mouse to create a new cut if you need to, and left click. So now I've got a supporting loop here and here, which is affecting the structure of the area around this loop. Now this one doesn't look straight, but if I turn off the on cage, you'll see that it is straight just there. I might need to move these out and I can press GG to slide those out. Press E a couple of times to make sure it's flat. 
and I can select the other one there. And I'll go into X-ray mode so you can easily see it and drag that across there, GG, to edge slide. Alt-Z to come back out of X-ray mode. And you can see we've got a nice smooth transition in there and it's not affected by this area. So if I come to object mode, right click and shade smooth, you can see we've got a nice even curved transition in there. So that's the essence of supporting loops. The loops either side will influence the sharpness of this crease in here and its structure in the sense that these are now completely flat. So the one in the middle is completely flat. So understanding of supporting loops like this that support this middle edge just here is absolutely crucial. Okay, so hopefully you've got an okay with that. How do I get to the next phase like this then? Pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, so I'll move this across to the side, move this one up, and we obviously need to give it some thickness like this. So into edit mode, select all, and we can't just press E to extrude in the Y because we get this thin bit just here. So I need to undo that and press Alt E and extrude along the face normals so I can bring it out like so. So probably somewhere around about there. You can have a good look around and use the offset here if you need to adjust it. But that looks about right. Let's just go into object mode and see if they're the same. They're not quite the same. This one has much more rigidity to it, whereas this has more soft curved roundness. So there's a sharpness to the external edges. And the way to do that is supporting loops. So again, into edit mode, and I can press Control R, do a supporting loop around here. And you can see instantly that that makes it slightly more rigid, but actually I need two so I can affect either side. So I'll undo that. Control R, wheel of my mouse to create two, and double left click to set those in position. And you can see we've got a bit more rigidity, unlike in the middle here. So I need to do the same in the middle here. So that's got that nice rigidity there. Okay, so that's good. And hopefully you got an okay with that, but it's not quite there yet. Let's bring in one that I made earlier. How is it that I've got sharper edges around this one here than I have around this one here? And I'll give you a hint, it's not to do with the levels of the subdivision. If I turn them both up, you can see that this one still has a nice crisp sharp edge, especially in the middle here, whereas this one has a much softer edge. Have a quick think why that may be. Well, you might have thought if I go into edit mode, select one of these and press GG to edge slide it in, I can force a little bit more structure around there, but it's not quite as crisp as this one here. That's because there's no inside supporting loop in here. So you might have thought again, you can come in and add some rigidity like this. And that is indeed how you add some sharpness like so. Incidentally, if I GG on this one, and press E for even, I can get it even along the edges like so. And we've got this nice crisp edge, but we've got an edge in here. How do we sort out edges like this so we have this nice smooth structure like this? Have a quick think if you haven't already figured it out. And I'll go into edit mode so you can see the structure a bit more clearly that might help. Well, the difference is if I come in a bit closer, this edge here has two supporting loops going across. If I go to vertex mode and select here and shift select here and press J to join, I need to do that the other side as well. So I'll just select here and here, J to join. I can now go to edge mode and select these two and control X to dissolve. And now we've got a topology flow, which allows a nice smooth transition across here because there's no supporting loops. If I try and select these edge loops here and slide those along and then these ones here and slide those along. It's much more awkward. So the simplicity of this, because it's got no supporting edges, means it's a nice transition. We therefore need to do the same around here as well. The easy way to do that, if I just quickly go to the on cage option, I can select my inside faces, which you can see there. Alt E to extrude long normals, and I can bring those in to create an edge loop around here for those. And again, you can see that's sharpened this up nicely. So we can end up with something along these sort of lines. Because of that edge flow, I can easily select these edges, GG to slide them out, and I can sharpen that edge up, as you can see, just there. And that's why edge flow around a shape can be really important. So hopefully you've learned something here about edge flow and supporting loops. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.